yield curve uh, is one of the first charts uh, you, you're looking at for us. Yes, and yield curve has been all over the news, and everybody's worried that the sky is falling because we've seen the yield curve inverted, and the sky could be falling at some point in the future, but everyone needs to just keep their pants on for now and realize that the yield curve gives a really long early warning about trouble. It doesn't say that trouble is upon us now. And so that it takes several months to uh, even over a year sometimes before we get the final price high after a yield curve and inversion. And if, if you get an instance like 1995, there was a very momentary yield curve inversion and then it backed off and the bull market kept on going. So that is possible. So the point is don't panic now if you're a stock market investor about the yield curve. But now if you're running a bank, yeah, you should be panicked about it because this is not healthy for the banking system. Yeah. Uh, second point you want to make uh, is about an oversold bottom on stocks. What are you looking at? We have, and, and, and I brought you an obscure but fun uh, old indicator created by Norman Fosbach back in the 1970s called the absolute breadth indicator. And what he looked at was the advanced decline difference every day uh, regardless of which way it was going. So just the, the absolute value of the number. And when that gets to, the, when the average of that gets up to a really high level, I mean, it's, it gives you a message very similar to average true range. You're having a lot of loud days with big up or big down, and that's a sign of a bottom. And sure enough, that's, we're seeing bottom where the indications from that right now. Uh, at the same time, though, uh, the advanced decline line itself on a cumulative basis is acting very strong. We only needed about 1,900 net advances today, and we probably came close. I haven't seen the final numbers. Only 1,900 to get us a new all-time high in the advanced decline line. So even though prices are still off their high, breadth numbers are, are saying liquidity is fine for now, and so we don't need to worry about a big crash. And Tom, final chart, sentiment. Well, doesn't mean that we don't, just because we don't need to worry about a big crash doesn't mean that people aren't doing it anyway. We're seeing lots of bottom worthy indications in the put call numbers. We're looking at the number of puts that get traded versus the calls. And in this case, the chart I provided you is for the equity only. So not the, uh, the, the futures, not the indexes. This is just for individual stocks. And when that gets up to a very high level, like we've just seen for its 21 day moving average, that's associated reliably with important bottoms. So we've done enough work to have a bottom. We've, we've bounced now. We're seeing very strong breath. That doesn't mean that we're out of the woods for seasonality right away because September has a reputation that's well-deserved. And especially when you get a big mushy bottom like we've had in August as opposed to a spike low like we had last December, this, you tend to get a slower climb coming out of it. So we're, we're still in an uptrend. We're still in a bull market. We're going to have a slow climb coming out of it. But uh, the bull market should live on into early 2021.